Today's podcast is proudly brought to you by Plus Fitness Castle Dine. Experience the plus side with Plus Fitness Castle Dine. Enjoy 24-hour access to 220 plus gyms, flexible memberships and dynamic classes. Follow them on Instagram at Plus Fitness Castle Dine or call them today on 32617400 or simply drop in and say hello to the team. You can find them at the Castle Dine Homemaker Centre in Castle Dine. With a 20-year reputation for clean business, Matt Glynn at Code Property Group is the first choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast and surrounding areas. I've known Matt for a very long time from a personal level and professional level, and he is an excellent real estate agent. He's professional, he holds a high level of integrity, he presents incredibly well, and has a huge amount of knowledge when it comes to the real estate industry. So if you are in the market to buy, sell, or simply get a valuation and find out more about your current property, then give Matt a call on 0404 315 066 or matt.glynn, G-L-Y-N-N at code PG. Dot com. You won't be disappointed. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Paul's Body Engineering Podcast. All right, so once again, solo run this week. Um, you know, it seems it's really interesting, I guess, the uh, the topics that come to mind, and I've mentioned this in previous podcasts before, generally discussions with clients or there's something I've seen on social media and I've gone, yeah, that'd be a great topic to discuss. And today's no different. Um, entitled The 1% Club, and that's kind of a, uh, <laughs> a rip-off of the game show that's on TV at the moment, but I really like it because... Um, it effectively represents or means, um, you know, all the little things that we can do to improve our own health and fitness. You know, um, I often, I'm a big rugby league fan, right? And I listen to a lot of rugby league podcasts. I listen to a lot of coaches talk, journalists talk, and they all reference extras. They all reference the one percenters. And that's effectively meaning all the little things that players can do to improve their own performance, but also their team's performance. And it it's simple things like, you know, uh, as a goal kicker, you, you spend another hour after training practicing your kicking rather than just what you do during training. You know, the, the, the line speed, the ruck speed, the, um, the intent, the ball on the ground, chase after it, play to the whistle. Like all these things are incredibly important yet can be overlooked because they seem so minimal or small at the time. Now, when it comes to health and fitness, it's very similar. You know, it's the little one percenters that you can do that add up over time, um, you know, you want to create good momentum over time. You want to create a good system, a good structure, a good routine that you have. And within that routine, little improvements that you can make really can make a massive difference. And it's, it's simple stuff, right? Uh, as a prime example, you know, we all know how important sleep is. And, and I've gone on about it often. Um, so how do you improve sleep by doing something simple that doesn't require a huge amount of effort? Well, by going to bed 15 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes earlier every single night is a simple change that you can make that can have a profound effect on your ability to get better sleep. By going to bed that half an hour earlier, you're putting yourself in a stronger position to get to sleep earlier, therefore getting more sleep, potentially better sleep, better quality sleep, deeper sleep, and more recovery. And that's only with a half an hour initiative. You know, it's only improving your um, ability to go to bed a little bit earlier. And now I go to a previous podcast I've done a couple of weeks ago about what are you willing to sacrifice. Well, are you willing to sacrifice half hour of TV or half hour of staying up to simply get better sleep? And we all know how great you feel. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you either know you've had a good night's sleep because you feel refreshed, you feel energetic, or you've had a crappy sleep or just not enough sleep. And you feel tired and you feel like you could have gone to sleep more. That's the difference. So by making that 1% improvement, and it could simply be 15 minutes. You know, it could simply be 20 minutes. It could simply be half an hour. But by putting yourself in that position to do so and creating that new routine, you can make a huge improvement on your overall, uh, overall sleep, therefore overall health. And who doesn't want to be more energized? Who doesn't want to have more energy each and every day rather than trying to run on empty on an empty tank 
and more so, you know, relying on caffeine to sort of get you going in the morning. It's not the ideal situation. So, you know, the 1% is it's going to be very personal. It's going to be very customized. You've got to identify where you believe you can make subtle improvements. And I, I emphasize the word subtle because they don't have to be huge. Okay. Um, simple things. Another prime example is whenever someone goes away on holidays and they come back, there's an sort of an unrealistic expectation that they can just slip straight back into their health and fitness regime without missing a beat. Now, again, there's a lot of variables here, depending on how long you've been away, depending on um, you know whether you were training while you were away, whether you ate off script, all these sorts of factors. But generally speaking, you don't just slip back in. It takes several days, in fact, to get back up to the caliber of training and the routine that you previously had. So. It's a day-by-day proposition. It's a 1%, 5%, 10% improvement every single day to get you back up there. Unfortunately, and again, I've highlighted this in previous podcasts, as a society, we have this impatience when it comes to many things, and this is one of them. We just feel that we can get back to what we were doing and not bide our time, not work up to that level that we once were. Um, Same with injury recovery, same thing. You know, I've got a lot of clients at the moment that have gone through elective surgery um, and they have to buy their time. They have to follow the rules. They have to take the advice of the professionals in order to fully recover and get back to the level of training that they were at. And once they fully recovered, they still need time to get their strength back. They still need time to get their routine back. So, you know, it's the building blocks. It's the one percenters. It's the little extras that you can do to improve everything that you're trying to put together. You know, and the I guess the um, you know the old analogy or um, it's somewhat somewhat of a cliche. It's a marathon, not a sprint, right? We've got to be we've got to change our mindset and be in it for the long haul. This is not about a short term fix. It's not about a short term result. Um, otherwise, a one percent option would not work. If you're trying to make a one percent improvement over the short term, you're not going to see an improvement or a very, very minor improvement. But if you do a 1% improvement every single day or every second day or once a week, depending on how you operate, you know, there could be a potentially, like if you do a 1% improvement every single day, there's 36% for the year or 36.5% for the year. Um, you know, that, that, that can be a massive, massive change in your entire life simply by making those subtle changes, you know. Um, and sleep's just one example, um, you know, putting in that extra effort at the gym, maybe going to the gym at a, at a time that's going to suit you better, um, you know, whether it's busy or not, that may then open up more time throughout the day for you, you know, preparing your food in advance. I talk about this all the time. Not everyone can do it, and, and I appreciate that, but by having preparation and being organized, planning your week in terms of your nutrition and how it looks, it's going to save you time in the long run, and that time can then be allocated to more important things, to more prioritized things, whether it's family time, work, um, studies, the, I don't know, it's completely up to you, but it will you will create some time there that you can then utilize, and that's going to improve things for you. Um, if you prepare your food in advance, does that mean you can get to bed earlier as well? Going back to my original point, you know, these things are fundamentally overlooked a lot of the time because it, it we just tend to think that it'll just happen, you know, it'll just magically do itself. Whereas, no, 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 you may need to put in a little bit more effort at the start to create the habit, to create the change, to create that one percenter. But once you've done it, it makes life a hell of a lot easier in terms of being prepared and being organized. And then, you know, we often, look, life still goes on, right? We still have things pop up that we're not expecting. There's still emergencies, there's still issues that we have to resolve. But by having things in the background that are in place that are, that are staple as part of your week and, and don't really change, that's the backbone of your week. That's the backbone of your life. That will not change. That won't go anywhere. Therefore, you can always rely on it to be there and you can always rely on it to help you when time is of an essence, when you're pressured, when you're stressed, when things aren't going your way. You've still got that in place. Um, and that's why these 1% improvements can really make a huge difference. Now, uh, speaking of 1% improvements, what about your nutrition? Can you make subtle improvements every single week? Is it a case that you slowly but surely reduce processed food and increase your fresh food? Is that a simple 
but effective way to make an improvement to your week? I think so. I think it's easy enough. Um, a reduction in maybe takeaway options or you know meals out, um, and then. The bonus of that is obviously saving money as well. You know, we all know how tough things are at the moment in terms of finances. So can you make a improvement as we deem it um, by reducing the amount of eating out or takeaway that you may have and then reinvest that money into something else? You know, is it a case that you get a more, you know, you, put, you, you reinvest it into your health in some way and then that's going to further advance your improvement. So not only are you making a 1% improvement simply by making that choice about your food, you're actually probably doubling down and then improving your health and reinvesting it. So that's a really probably smart move, I would suggest. Um, You know, in terms of your food choices, absolutely. You know, if you can make a subtle but yet um, integral improvement in your food choices every week, we know how important food is, not only from weight, but just overall health and energy as well. Uh, And then we talk about water. Again, we know water is a incredibly important component we're made up of uh, I think it's over 60 to 70 percent of water so we need to be hydrated on a regular basis so can you make a small improvement to your water intake so say at the moment you're only drinking one liter a day on average right over the course of the next week let's look at increasing that to 1.25 I think that's a very achievable increase and it may be challenging at the start but it's not like one so an extra 250 mil is effectively a glass of water So if you make that improvement and just sit on that for a week, that'll become the new norm. You you will adapt to drinking that much. Your body will adapt to drinking that much. And then all of a sudden, your your new low is 1.25. Once you've settled in for maybe a week, maybe two, depending, then you go to 1.5. It's another 250 increase. And it's surprising how quickly that can add up. So over, say, two months, you could be up to two and a half liters. And that's a much stronger intake of water for a human being, for an adult. Um, obviously males probably need a little bit more than females it just depends on your muscle mass your, your physiology um, composition etc uh, but you know generally speaking we do need a reasonable amount of more water more than you are probably aware therefore starting low and working your way up in small increments is a simple yet effective way to adapt and not do it too quickly and get yourself into a really health, healthy position from a water intake perspective so just another way of doing something so so simple yet yet can really make a huge, huge difference in terms of your overall health. Are you looking for a new place to train that is unintimidating, welcoming, and has state-of-the-art equipment? Then Plus Fitness Castledine may just be the gym for you. Locally owned, it is a fantastic facility offering 24-hour access, flexible memberships, and dynamic classes. You can find them at the Castledine Homemaker Centre in Castledine. Drop in say hello or give them a call on 32617400 and follow them on Instagram at Plus Fitness Castledine. If we apply this same uh, mentality or same philosophy to your training, now obviously a lot of people um, have an issue with time. They just don't have enough time or that is the complaint or the potential excuse for that matter in relation to prioritizing exercise. Now, if you look at it from a 1% improvement perspective, you know, maybe you've got two days a week where you can, you, you know, you, you believe you've got the opportunity to train. Okay, that's great. I, I completely applaud that. Make sure you make the most of it. But is there a third day where you can find the time? Now, this is where you can break down your week. And I've referenced this in a previous podcast where if you actually block out your day, a day-to-day in terms of where you need to be, what you need to do, so by the half hour, Okay, so from, say, 7.30 to, to 8, I'm doing this. 8 to 8.30, I'm doing this. Then, then that way, there is no, um, there's no space. There's no time. But what you'll find by doing that and getting so incremental in that approach is that you'll find all this, as my wife would say, white space, all this time. And it might be a half-hour block here. It might be a half-hour block there because we are doing it in half-hour blocks. And all of a sudden there's these gaps within your day where you actually haven't got anything filled. And it's just previously been filled by you not doing much of anything, really, just wasting time. Um, So then you look at the overall day or the overall week and you go, okay, if I shift this half hour to here, that opens up an hour there. I can get to the gym in that time. So straight away, you've made, well, you know, I know I'm talking 1%, but you've made a significant improvement by allowing yourself or giving yourself time by doing that process 
to get to the gym a third day. And all of a sudden, that's a massive, massive change in terms of your week. You know, if you look at the, the course of 12 months, so 365 days, I'm going to get my calculator out here. 365 days, no, sorry, let's go 52 weeks and times that by two sessions a week is 104 sessions a week. If we now go 52 by three, that's 156 sessions a week. So an additional, I knew that, <laughs> my math is never good. An additional 52 sessions per year, uh, and, and it was per year, that you can increase by simply going through that exercise. Now you may not find the time and that's okay, but at least you go through the exercise and you eliminate that as an option rather than not knowing for sure. So, you know, by finding, and look, an hour may, you may not need an hour. You may only need half an hour. You know, you might prefer a group fitness class or a functional class or something like that that only knock, it's knocked over in, in half an hour. That's fine. But if you do training yourself, then maximize the opportunity and get in there and get it done. You know, there's plenty of ways to shorten your training session by shortening the rest periods, super setting, king setting. You know, there's plenty of ways to maximize time and get a really solid workout in rather than, um, you know, delay it and lengthen it when you really don't have the time to do so. So just another way, another opportunity to improve what is already existing. Experience the difference with Matt Glynn at Code Property Group. With a 20-year reputation of a clean business, Matt is your guy when it comes to all things real estate. Make sure you give him a call now on 0404 315 066. In terms of mental health, we know this is a a very relevant topic, a very touchy topic in some capacity because a lot of people are struggling in a number of different capacities. But there's certainly 1% improvements you can make in your mental health. Now, this isn't obviously my area of expertise, but when you're a personal trainer, when you're a coach like I am, obviously mental health comes into play more often than not. So you do get a lot of experience in managing people with this uh, with this space. Now, to make 1% improvements in your mental health, okay, well, is it a case that you learn how to uh, manage your stress better? How do we do that? Well, there's simple things out there. There's so much free stuff uh, available on, online that you can utilize to help with your mental health. If you're, if you're an anxious person, uh, the, excuse me, I just tripped over my own tongue. If you are an anxious person, and that is a common trait when it comes to dealing with conflict or tough times or you know indecisiveness or whatever, um, there are ways to improve that simply by making subtle improvements. Is it a case that you need to just practice your breathing a little bit more? And we're not talking undertake a huge Wim Hof breath work workshop or anything like that because breathing controls your nervous system, right? So if you can have stronger control over your nervous system, your nervous response or your anxious response to a situation can be controlled better. Therefore, you're not going to get into that heightened state. So going through you know, some, some breath-working practices simply by controlling deeper breathing will allow you to potentially control your nervous system. And this will take time, but that's why it's 1%, right? Do a little bit each week and improve it each week. But you've got to stick to it. You've got to implement it. You've got to do it on a regular basis to allow your body and your mind to adapt to this scenario. So there's one thing. Further to that, you know, developing mental resilience, again, comes with time. Do you need to speak to somebody? Do you need to have a support group? Do you need to listen to some more inspiring podcasts on a weekly basis? And that's the thing too. Like I mentioned about how much stuff is out there that is free. There are so many good podcasts that really help and offer significant personal development when it comes to these sorts of situations. But we've got to utilize them on a regular basis. It's like anything. The more you do something, the better you get at it. So if you continually listen to outstanding, um, mentally strong, mentally tough, mentally resilient, repeated messages through pe- people who ha- have experience or expertise or qualifications, you're going to start to believe that you can do it too, simply through the technique of repetition. You know, you're going to it's, it's like the, the, the saying, you know, if you surround yourself with positive people, you're going to think more positively, right? Well, if you surround yourself with, with positive information, mental, mentally resilient information, and listen to it over and over and over again through different messaging systems and different styles, you're going to start to believe that you are tougher than you, you, you previously were. And you're going to start to believe that you can tolerate more conflict, more issues. You're going to stand up more. You're going to have a voice. And next thing you know, you're going to prioritize you. 
all off the back of making 1% subtle improvements. I cannot emphasize this enough. Like it's so, it's so simple that we overlook it, yet time is our biggest friend, not enemy. You know, we often complain that time's getting past us. We're getting old too quick. The year's gone by, like it is April. So the year has gone by very, very quickly. But through the, the first, you know, three and a bit months, if you had made a 1% improvement in any capacity to anything within your life, every single day, you'd be significantly further along right now. And it doesn't take much time. That's the other thing. We, we complain about not having enough time, but this is something that should be a priority. It should be incredibly important. And if you started the year saying to yourself or saying to friends or saying to your partner, I, I really want to make some changes here. I really want to do something that is going to help with my improvement, my development, my mental health, my physical health. I want to lose weight. I want to eat better. I want to exercise more. I want to play some sport. What what did that look like? What steps did you take to actually make that happen? Because it's all well and good to say a big outlandish statement like that and have a big outlandish goal, but you've got to break it down to the little subtle one percent is that are going to get you to that goal. Every goal is achievable. Don't get me wrong. You can achieve anything you put your mind to, and I know that is cliche, but it's incredibly true. But you've got to put the work in to get there. You've got to get yourself uncomfortable. You've got to work really, really hard. You've got to commit to time that you probably didn't know you had. And you've got to put in a lot of one percenters that will eventually add up to 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. And next thing you know, you have made significant change. And that there is the ultimate goal. Who doesn't want optimal health? Who doesn't want optimal strength? Who doesn't want an optimal living existence where you are strong, you're energetic, you wake out of bed and you're good to go. You've got a clear mind. There's no stresses in your life or very little. You know, you've got your, your bank account is healthy. Like all of these things can be improved over time with subtle changes day to day. So I think that's a really great note to finish up on. Um, I'd like to thank today's podcast sponsors plus Fitness Castle Dine. Fantastic gym, fantastic facility. Please, if you're in the Castle Dine or Brisbane area and would like a change to a gym or just want to join up to a new one, jump in and see the guys at Plus Fitness Castle Dine. And the other podcast sponsor today, first time as a sponsor, is Co Property Team Matt Glenn. Matt, I've known Matt for a very, very long time, since high school, in fact. Um, I train him in my gym a couple of times a week. He's an outstanding individual, very professional. Um, incredibly knowledgeable when it comes to property. So if you're interested in your property, uh, not only getting listed, but just further information about what its value currently is, what the market's doing, give Matt a call. All of those uh, sponsors' information will be in the show notes as well. So thank you once again for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's podcast. If you're interested in any of my coaching services, please jump on paulsbodyengineering.com or alternatively, uh, jump to Instagram, look up Paul's Body Engineering, and you can l- jump on the link in my bio or simply send me a DM if you've got a question. Uh, other than that, as I said, every client, every single day, have a great day.